All right, so COVID-19 is not just a buzzword, but it is a reality in 185 countries, including right here in Nigeria. Now, it's no secret that the healthcare sector in Nigeria has had many challenges from not being sufficiently funded to insufficient doctors to not having equipment to work with. So today, these health workers are on the front line of this fight against the COVID-19. Um, to discuss this, we would have um, Dr. B, Dr. Bayo Oga on Skype, and we we'll also have Julie Mogbo. She is the Programs Director at Lead Nurse in Africa International Foundation. She's also the Family Bond Nurse, and um, we'll join Dr. B first on <laughs> Skype, then we'll now come to um, Julie Mo currently here with us in the studio. So, Dr. Bayo Oga, are you with me? Are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you so much for joining us um, this evening. Thank you. You're welcome. So we, we're talking about preparedness of health workers in um, this season that we found ourselves, the coronavirus pandemic. Um, I would like to start with this question. What is the work environment looking like for you um, since the pandemic started? Oh, well, thank you very much. The work environment in is... Um, a bit relaxed um, because we have stopped handling acute, sorry, elective procedures. We no longer handle um, elective surgeries. We no longer handle elective treatment. What I mean is we don't we don't handle planned treatment. We only treat acute cases at the moment. Okay. As a result of that, we've reduced the pressure on the the manpower and the personnel in the hospitals so that we can create avenue and room to be able to handle this pandemic should the case it uh, escalates to a, a proportion that uh, we are not emphasizing. So basically, the working environment is a little bit relaxed since you don't have elective cases, you just have acute cases. And then we created a um, lot of space to be able to handle the COVID-19 patients. So it's relaxed at the moment. Awesome. So what is the major challenge you've had to deal with throughout this uh, period of the COVID-19 period? Uh, well, basically, uh, the major challenge we had to deal with uh, was the issue of sensitizing people and, um, and making people understand mm -hmm. the importance and the, the value of um, social distancing, the precautionary steps to be taken. Uh, in the beginning, it was difficult letting people understand the gravity of what we are facing. But over the course of time, through proper sensitization and awareness, people have taken into um, in, in, taking this seriously and we have um, we've been able to really um, in, uh, enforce and impose these uh, social distancing which have been very very successful. Um, that way we've been able to, like you will see in the statistics, I don't know if you've gone through them you we're able to say that despite we have high amount of infection but the mortality rate is really really small in Germany. This was what we had as a major challenge in the beginning. Um, but now it's been, um, um, it's much better now because the people have responded to what we've been talking about, about social distancing. Yeah. So are there incentives for um, health workers currently in um, Baham? Uh, well, um, incentives, we, we have um, um, incentives for, for doctors and nurses as it were. You know, the, the, mm -hmm. the truth about it is um, we have been... Um, structuring we've been awaiting worst case scenario in germany since february we've been putting tax force in place we've been um, um putting parameters in place so doctors and nurses who have to work extra time um doctors and nurses who have to sacrifice their their what do you call it now their vacations and all that have been given incentives in terms of financial incentives and also a uh, talk of um, extra um, um days of um, you have free days from work and um stuff like that we have a proper good insurance system that covers, you know, hazards and so on and so forth. But from Beautiful. the hospital, the acute incentives have been made available with things like, you know, you have extra time after work, you have extra vacation days, you have extra pay, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And you wow. have extra pay. I mean, <laughs> that's, like, that's, that's, that's the part that caught my attention. <laughs> All right, so, um, do, um, Dr. Bayo, so if you had an advice for developing countries on ways to handle this pandemic, what would that advice be? Basically, the most important thing, especially for developing countries, the most important thing will be precautionary steps, preventive measures. Okay. Ensure that you don't get to a state where you need to 
put patients on ventilators. Ensure you don't get to a state where you need patients have gone to advanced state of the COVID-19. Um, if you can put pre pre preventionary uh, you know, plans in place and enforce them, it will be the best thing for developing nations because you don't have the, Capacity. you know, the the the, mm -hmm. the manpower, so to say. You don't have the equipment to be able to handle a pandemic of such nature when if it should ag ag aggravate to that um, level. So, best thing for developing nations is ensure you sensitize people to a large scale on the importance of social distancing, um, maintain of proper hygiene, and um, basically ensuring preventive measures are put in place. That way, you will be able to save the, 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 the few funds you have available, the mega funds you have available, and you're able to um, prevent people of getting to acute states where they need to be placed on ventilators, where the prognosis actually, uh, uh, when you get to a, an advanced state of the COVID-19 infection, is pretty, pretty bad. So oh. you can avoid that when you enforce or you channel most of your strength on preventive measures. That okay. was the best thing to do. Thank you so much, Dr. Bayo Oga, for joining us. And thank you so much for your time. <laughs> it was a privilege. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so, and we have Julie Moore with us here in the studio. Thank you so much for staying with us. Yeah, and my um, pleasure. you heard all the conversation that Dr. Bayo had been given. And I, I just saw you nodding and saying, yes, this is yes. what we need in Nigeria. <laughs> I mean, why, do you, why were you nodding to those recommendations? I, I was nodding because he made mention of the acute incentives. Mm. Mm. If we follow, if we follow the, the statement made by our Honorable Minister, Minister of Health. Health. Ah, I was coming there. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if we do not see the management of COVID as a severe case, if he's regarding it as a regular everyday job, then it calls for serious concern. And no, you know what? I think for those people that do not know what happened, I read that thing and I was in shock. It mm. took, I mean, the speaker had to say, Oga, are you sure you know no, what you're saying? saying? Because, it, I mean, this is it's not, not a normal, normal situation. Routine. Globally in the world, nobody has had this kind of things to confront. Mm -hmm. So why would you? And where was that coming from? You are supposed to be a medical personnel, mm -hmm. right? He's a medical he's So he's a medical supposed doctor. to feel the pain so of So how people. would you say that this mm -hmm. is the regular job that medical practitioners or medical personnel handle mm -hmm. every day? So it's like their normal work. Normal you work. know, so for mm -hmm. me, I was a bit worried when I heard that, when I read his, um, what's it called? That, 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 that statement, article, yes. when I read it, and he was saying that um, hazard allowances and all of that, I mean, they, he's, not, he's not aware that this it, is any new job. Yes, it, it Be calls for concern, and it will tell the health workers that, okay, this is the kind of leader that we have. How sure are we that he's going to be pushing for our interest? Now, based on the concerns of um, health um, workers, what I also discovered is that health workers are looking for access to uh, appropriate personal pro protective um, equipment, PPE. They are also um, in interest of um, um, looking for a way of, you know, being protected from um, exposure to COVID-19 at work. They're also looking at a way that not having rapid access to testing if infected, these are the concerns of health workers, um, not having rapid um, access to testing in infected um, areas, if, if infected, sorry, mm -hmm. then uncertainty in the job. Now, looking at this, all they are looking at is the, the organization or the government that they're working with should hear them, prepare them, protect them, support them, and care for them. Yes. These are the concerns all in one five, what, um, five um, points. points. Yes. So what so do you think what about do you think those about concerns? Are, yes. they, are they legit concerns? They are, absolutely, they mm -hmm. are. It's important when we have this a kind of um, crisis, mm. we, the, the attitude that I expect should be that let's look for help in any form possible. What manpower, what kind of resources do we need? Do we have, uh, do we have enough currently in the clinical setting? They're supposed to make that assessment. If we do not have, call on the stakeholders call on the nursing association, call on the medical association. How many do you have on your registration role? Mm -hmm. How many nurses do we have in Nigeria? How many medical doctors do we have in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. If 
We have a search. Do we have the capacity? These mm -hmm. are the conversations that I expect they would have had so Julie from Mo, the beginning. Mm -hmm. Julie Mo, mm -hmm. when I was reading about the incentive, because I, I, yes. I'm very particular about, about the, the incentives. hazard allowance. Yes. Yes. Because, I mean, this is, is new. So what I gathered, mm. and help me correct if, if mm. I'm wrong, I gathered that you're being paid currently 5,000 naira as hazard allowance. Mm -hmm. And what the people are clamoring for is that al hazard allowance to be raised to about 200,000 naira. Mm -hmm. Even that 200,000 naira, I'm still saying that it's not it's enough. enough. I'm in shock that yeah. our hazard allowance is 5,000 5, naira. Yeah. Is that correct? It's correct. Oh my goodness. Sadly. So if you lose your life in the process of getting the job done, 5, it's 5,000 naira. Okay, so, so this conversation cannot, um, we can't really get a full picture except we bring in some of these government people. people yeah. But I want mm -hmm. to talk about you as a nurse. Yes. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine calls me up and she was crying hysterically on the phone that her sister went to the hospital and the nurses were just go, go, go because she was coughing. She had a pre-existing heart condition. Oh, but because yeah. of the current pandemic and the scare all over the place, yeah. mm -hmm. the health workers are afraid. Mm -hmm. But you are a nurse. Mm -hmm. What do you think nurses can do better? Okay, now, for, for those that are in the front line, it's a difficult question because what mm -hmm. the nurses are used to before the breakout mm -hmm. is to manage equipment. You can really practice the ideal nursing because we don't have, uh, we, we, we are working in a deplorable healthcare facility. Mm -hmm. There aren't enough equipment and all that. There aren't enough nurses to care for the patients. Mm -hmm. So they are used to, oh, let's borrow from here. Let's manage this. That's what they are currently used to. Mm -hmm. So asking them to quickly evolve, to fit into the current need, considering speaking in the context of this pandemic, with this breakout now, it's a difficult one. So for the nurses, they first of all need to identify what their weaknesses or what the gaps are. Because it is expected of you to be prepared, it is expected of you to carry out the necessary standard precautionary measures and their, their steps. So this is not the normal way they do their, their, the nursing uh, care mm -hmm. within the hospital. So there's a standard. So for them to psych themselves, to fit into the new stand, compulsorily, mm. if you don't want to get infected. So they have to get themselves into that state of, okay, this is a pandemic. This is highly infectious. Mm. I need to move from, this is not the normal setting. I can't borrow anymore. They need to tell themselves that I can't borrow anymore. So if I'm asked to borrow, I must speak out, that is one. Then two, this is not a case where you're managing your illness and you're going to manage another. So mm. we have many nurses that are having underlying medical conditions that is contraindicated in caring for COVID cases or yes. COVID patients. So have we done an assessment to check how many nurses are battling diabetes? Has how, any, many how, man, how, how many have hypertension? How many have kidney problems? How many have existing conditions? Do we have uh, do we have nurses that are resigning as a result of this? I have received calls. Yes, I have nurses who have uh, resigned. For some from the private sector, they uh, feel like okay, our facility has just um, informed us that they want to start taking in COVID cases, and I don't think we're ready for these. I have to resign. So I've had those that have resigned. I have those that are currently panicking. Maybe mm -hmm. the part of the fear is that if I resign, will I have my How job I back? Feed? If I take a fee, uh, if I take a leave, will I have my job back? And if I leave, will I get my salary? If I tell them, okay, I need a break, let me take my leave. Because some people were fortunate enough. They've taken their leave during this period. This but period. how long? The leave is not for a year. Hmm. You have to get back to work at some point. Exactly. So the fear is, will I get my job back? And if I don't get it back, how do I survive no. and feed my family? Now let's come, so these let's are come to the competency. Things. Yes. During, during this period, we know that um, a lot of um, health workers have gone, to, gone down, left the country because of brain drain, yes. as a result of brain drain. So do we have competent health workers currently in Nigeria that can handle this? Of course we do have. Mm. Uh, workers here are competent, but then we cannot rule out the fact that it's important that we do our regular uh, course updates. There has to be constant trainings. And the management of COVID-19 requires a special kind of training because we are not used to it. So facilities, there's a training, there's a, there's a standard for facilities, there's a standard for the direct caregivers. These are the nurses and the doctors. Mm. Even the, the donning and the doffing of the uh, 
personal protective equipment. Exactly. They have to learn it. There are stages. So mm. you, you don't just put it on like you're putting on your regular cloth. You don't just put it on, put it on like when you just want to handle so a regular based emergency. On, based on the so experiences or the, your feedbacks, do you think that the health workers have the tools and the PPEs that they can use to actually uh, some combat of them, this Some of illness. them uh, don't. The government has some done what they are doing almost. They're uh, doing the bit that they can. They're equipping some of these hospitals, but there aren't enough. I think what is lacking is strategic thinking. Okay. okay. Because even in the Western world, they are, they, they are suffering shortages of this equipment. Mm -hmm. So why not? Some facilities are doing it already. They're running skeletal services, like you heard Dr. Uh, Dr. Bayer say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's, let, what cases can we handle? Which ones can't we? Which ones can we send uh, home? for their care, which brings me to some other aspect, what we're doing, because we're envisaging that we already know that there are other illnesses that will not go on holiday because exactly. COVID-19 has um, taken the front cases, So exactly. we have those cases at home. So is there a way that we can take care to people at home? Hmm. So these are some of the things that some facilities are doing. So some are working three days on, three days off, one week on, one week off. But hmm. now it's not just about that. What are we ensuring that the safety measures are being put, put in place. place. Okay. So it's those, those things I, I, I brought up. Yes. So um, mm -hmm. I, I listened keenly to what Dr. Bayer was saying, and it seems to me that I think the concerns of medical personnel is quite easy. Okay, so how do I take a break, a holiday? It's not like your demands are too much for medical personnel. Mm -hmm. It's to be able to say, you know what, I overwork at this period, so what is the future for me? How would I take a break? How would I take a holiday? Yeah. And and what he kept on harping on mm -hmm. when I said, what is his advice to the developing countries? Mm -hmm. He kept harping on preventive measures. Yes. Preventive measures. Yes. Currently, um, um, Gilimo, do you think that the way we are handling the preventive measures for this COVID-19 mm -hmm. is the appropriate way? Let me yeah. rephrase. Mm -hmm. I feel that the, the health workers, like the nurses and the doctors, should be the frontliners in terms of this educating the populace on the preventive measures but yes. do you think that has been done uh, no no it's not if, if at all i've not i've not felt like we're doing enough okay we're supposed to have we are not big on preventive um, care yes we are not so we just even the the populace the citizens you you you, you have a symptom you're feeling some kind of pain you want to push it aside you want to pray it away you want to wait until it gets to a point you can't manage anymore and then you come to the hospital. So if we had it at a culture, this would have been better managed. So if you sense a little bit of cold, go and have a checkup. How many Nigerians go for a periodic checkup? They'll tell you that healthcare is expensive. So we do not have that in place as Currently. we should when it comes to preventive measures. Now, mm -hmm. we have the media. We cannot expect that everybody will go to WHO oh, website, exactly. NCDC website. We should create some um, kind of, I've, I've seen a lot of people trying to, um, teach how to wash hands. There was a celebrity that they did. And well, the steps, I said, okay, he's doing what he knows how to. Why not get the professionals also. to do this? Hmm. Are we about the followership now? On your page. Do you understand? Do you know what I'm saying? Aside from okay, that, so I, I, think I think it think also we'll goes down to the grassroots. The, the grassroots are not even ready. Because aware I, of I this. ask this question because most hmm. times when I see the sensitizations that has been done all over, most times, you, I mean, I see people using um, celebrities. celebrities, it's good because you want to reach out. But to people, yeah. the, the, the health care workers, I feel, should be the frontliners of this campaign yes. of the mm -hmm. message. But yes. let me take a comment um, from Uti. She says, we shouldn't be shocked that hazard pay is 5000 The reality is that several essential personnel, that's police, soldiers, medical prof uh, professionals. professionals, are underpaid. As a country, we need to prioritize how these professionals are remunerated. Mm -hmm. Let's hope the nation can afford a proper review and to approve new remuneration schemes afterwards. So we'll take a quick mm -hmm. break. We'll still have you with us, so you're not going anywhere. <laughs> we'll be right back after the break. Please stay with us. <laughs>